In discussing the large-scale structure of the cosmos, astronomers sometimes say that space is curved, or that the universe is finite but unbounded. Whatever are they talking about? Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean absolutely flat. And that we live, appropriately enough, in a flat land. A land designed and named by Edwin Abbott, a Shakespearean scholar who lived in Victorian England. Everybody in flat land is, of course, exceptionally flat. We have squares, circles, and triangles, and we all scurry about, and we can go into our houses and do our flat business. Now, we have width and length, but no height at all. Now, these little cutouts have some little height, but uh, let's ignore that. Let's imagine that these are absolutely flat. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. And the three-dimensional creature sees uh, an attractive, congenial-looking square, watches it enter its house, and decides in a gesture of interdimensional amity to say hello. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his insides, a voice from within. He surely is getting a little worried about his sanity. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration, and so he descends to actually enter Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in Flatland only partially. Only a plane, a cross-section through him can be seen. So, when the three-dimensional creature first reaches Flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen. And we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in Flatland. And as the apple were to descend through, slither by, slither by Flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices, which we can represent by cutting the apple. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion and so not such a friendly gesture from dimension to dimension, makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above flatland. At first, the square has no idea of what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. But after a while, he comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in Flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing Flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Getting into another dimension provides as an incidental benefit a kind of X-ray vision. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was in some other mystic dimension called up and they will pat him on his side and comfort him, or else they'll ask. Well, show us, where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it. 
and the poor square will be unable to comply.